Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I wanted to start off this video by showing you, um, I'm not going to show the video, but I'll just give you a brief description of what's being talked about. This is from uh, at XRP underscore veteran. Um, he posted this short clip kind of in the Stephen Diep fashion. Um, he posted this, and this is Christine Lagarde. I believe it's over there in Davos at the World Economic Forum is probably where this is from. And it's just a very short video that you should go watch. But this is one of the most powerful people in finance across the world. Um, and she, she runs the IMF. And so, and, and one thing that's been a constant is that she has been very interested in everyone being open-minded to digital currencies. And that's what this short clip is about. And we know that Ripple has been, has been working with the IMF. And so this is definitely worth your time if you've never seen her um, talk about how we need to approach digital currencies with an open mind. Very interesting little little snippet. Um, next, Bank XRP um, at Bank XRP. He's a definite follow on Twitter. Future success of digital assets will be driven by each asset's use case and regulatory clarity. We don't need thousands of coins. Each must have a legitimate reason for existing. Eric Van Miltenberg, uh, he's in the center. He's an SVP of global operations at Ripple. This was at uh, Binance. I think Binance held their conference in Singapore. And he's basically talking about uh, what I, I kind of believe too. No utility, no value. And so I think you'll see thousands of these digital assets go to zero and you'll be left with a handful of that have actual use case and you'll see companies born out of, uh, you know, companies that are born to, that want to create real use case with their digital assets and any of these scams or, or just digital assets where they're just more or less, it, it, I always like to compare it to back in the dot com, you would have some companies that would, there was no company, but they would buy a domain name uh, that had a dot com on the end of it. And all of a sudden they tried to act like they were a legitimate business when they were not. Well, this is really has such parallels to that because now you have people trying to issue digital assets, create tokens out of thin air, cash, make the money and cat and just get out and disappear a lot of them. And so it's the same type of thing. Now, if you haven't been watching it, go to the National Geographic channel every Sunday night. It, this TV show that shows it, it tracks um, the uh, the dot com boom and tell, it tells the story of what happened with Netscape, which was a legitimate company, and then it tells you what happened with another company that was a fraud. But it illustrates the point. I don't care what the boom is. Anytime there's a lot of money involved and people smell the money. You're going to have frauds show up and you're also going to have legitimate business sh businesses show up. And unfortunately, a lot of times the media will crisscross that and create the wrong impression, which is that all of them are frauds. And I think a lot of that has been done in, uh, in uh, the digital asset realm. But you don't have to spend more than about five minutes going around Ripple's website to realize that Ripple, of all the digital asset companies, that exist, Ripple is the real deal, Holyfield. Okay, uh, Evander Holyfield is from Atlanta, Georgia, close by. So uh, that's a little saying that I picked up growing up around here. Real deal, Holyfield. Um, moving along, um, this is from Bond Crip XRP. Uh, Ripple and XRP will take over the U.S. and the world one step at a time, disrupting the payments industry. This was a, um, an AMB crypto article. There are so many, so many things tied together in this article that I need to read you a decent amount of it so that you really understand just how huge what we are a part of in owning XRP is. This, is, this article is one of the better articles I've seen in a while. 
that really lays out some of the connections and all of the, the awesome things that Ripple has going. And remember, for XRP, Ripple is addressing one use case. Ripple, the company, is addressing one use or two payments companies and settlement, but one use case more or less with is what Ripple's working on. That doesn't that doesn't include the literally thousands of use cases that are going on or to come, like coil and other use cases. It doesn't even include that. So listen to this. This is just what Ripple is working on. Ripple announced that it, is, it has crossed more than 200 par partnerships with financial institutions, banks across 40 countries worldwide. The seemingly random partnerships that Ripple has been making is not so random once you step back and take a look at the bigger picture. Partnered with D&H Corporation, a leading provider of technolo technology solutions to financial institutions globally, on October 11, 2015, a few months from this date, February 2016, DNH announced that it had successfully integrated blockchain distributed ledger technology into its global payment services offerings. It further acknowledged uh, that a solution with their platform called Global Pay Plus Payments Platform that helps financial institutions manage different payments types and currencies across national borders. Clearinghouse Association and the Clearinghouse Payments Company, LLC, conduct business under the name The Clearinghouse. It is the oldest banking association and payments company in the United States. On June 17, 2017, DNH was acquired by Visa Equity Partners and combined with MISIS, operating under the new company name Finastra, Finastra revamped the global pay plus to fusion payments. December 5th, 2017, PNC, a top 10 U.S. bank, went live on RTP, real-time real payment trial. <clears throat> to make things more interesting, PNC is among the multiple partners that the clearinghouse has. The last but the final connection was when the dots traced a full circle as Ripple has already partnered with PNC. If it does seem like a sh long shot, the list clearinghouse includes the list of clearinghouse includes banks like Banco Santander, UBS, BNY Mellon, and there are rumors that Bank of America and Ripple are in talks about a partnership, and all of those are as well. With the above, with the above, the inference that can be drawn is that Ripple is indirectly related to all the partners in the clearinghouse's RTP, which is set to go live by 2020. Ripple is already putting Swift out of business with its blockchain solutions like XCurrent, XVIA, and XRapid. And then it goes on to say, Fed appointed faster payment task force is looking to XRP for an improved payment system that offers great speed, security, and efficiency. And then it finally says, Bank of England's governor, Mark Carney, discussed XRP a developing, developing an RTGS and also the plans for cross-border payment solutions. I mean, every it, it's like uh, in the I've heard DM Logic say it in a in a good way. He says, every financial rock you look underneath, Ripple seems to be there, and eventually XRP is going to be there as well. Okay, moving along. Now, I just wanted to sh uh, explain one thing. This is the article that I just uh, read from. Um, let's go through this real quick, too. This is Yanni Asia. I don't know if I'm saying that wrong. Asia. Catching up with Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple on X, X Rapid XRP and running a network validator. This is at the Paris FinTech Forum. This guy is the CEO of eToro. He's CEO and founder of eToro. Um, interesting perspective on the important role of banks in mass adop adoption of blockchain. I just thought we needed to see our uh, the general Brad Garlinghouse. Um, he's out and about. <clears throat> um, next, and this is huge too, folks. Ripple price analysis, XRP resurgence. Cobalt will be a game changer. And the only thing I want you to, to, to understand about this, I'm not going to go through the whole article, but here's what you need to know. And I'm going to read you this one line. We, we already know what the launch will mean for staunch XRP fans. Instantaneous settlements. That, this is, they're talking about Cobalt. 
Presently, XRP transaction settles in roughly four seconds. All that will change as payment will take one second before re reflecting on a holder's wallet. In other words, this cobalt upgrade that's going on, when it, when it happens, XRP will not just move in three to four seconds, it will move in one second, folks. That is a game changer. The world is about to change. And as XRP holders, our lives will change with it. Finally, I wanted to show you this. Cryptopia, Cryptopia, I told you about the hack a week or so ago. Cryptopia compromised in another attack by hackers. Loses $180,000 worth of Ethereum. Do not leave your digital assets on these exchanges, folks. I will keep telling you that as long as I have this channel. Today... Ledger did a video that you need to go watch, the Ledger Nano S people. Um, you can see it on their, um, you can see it on their Twitter feed at Ledger HQ. Um, they're giving you a sneak peek at how you can, can uh, pair your, the um, Ledger Nano X with Bluetooth with the software and the, the software on your, on your phone. Um, and to go get the Ledger Nano X, you can go in the description of all of my videos and you can also if you just want to get a Ledger Nano S, they're like they're only like fifty nine dollars now. So go in the in the description uh, of all my videos, and you can go and get one of those if you don't have one already. It's the safe way to store your digital assets. Really, the only safe way that we have as average investors. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Cryptopia got hacked again. Thank you for listening.